I can't believe that we're critical of race theory. That's so crazy. Obviously, the racism in all the old Bond movies is a bad thing. Mm -hmm. But, you know, Paris Hilton's in it. I do now. Dan, I've had remakes on the brain recently. Couldn't really tell you why. There's no just reason. like something, something that's been in a remaking kind of mood for me. I lied. I can't tell you why. Dead mm. Space came out. Yes. I don't know if you knew this, Dan, but Dead I, Space... I, I, is one of came your favorite out. games. Oh, oh, yeah, that too. But it it came out. That's what I was leading with. Well, you know, I'm proud like, of it, you know? Pick up what I'm... It's been, um, it's been, it's been around down. for long enough. I'm just glad that it feels comfortable enough to come out now. God bless Dead Space. Uh, Dead Space, I'm pretty sure Dead Space is a 15-year-old game. Dead Space is, yeah. Dead Space is not new. 2008. 15 years old. Okay, firstly, I want to shout out the first Dead Space. Because Dead Space is a gorgeous game. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The game... Because it operates so much in the dark, like you look at, I'm uh, if you look at the Steam store, you see some ugly screenshots. I'm not going to lie to you. Yeah. But if you play the game, the game does not look nearly as clunky as these screenshots are making it look. Like there's a couple of good screenshots in here, but like because of the use of dark and shadow in the game, it hides a lot of the uglier, like the uglier bits, all a lot of the uglier bits just are nicely covered up. You don't see it as much. Yeah. I and I feel like that is kind of a lost art in in a lot of like games in general. I really think it's definitely one of those things that you don't see as much anymore. Yeah, it's like the it's like the the odd things that they that you used to they used to do for like, I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of examples from like old games where it's like, oh, this was actually a restriction of the medium. And then it's like, oh, oh but it Silent also made Hill's the game fog. better. The Silent fog from fog. Silent exactly. Hill. Perfect. Is because the game could not. I'm I'm mansplaining this to you, but like mm. and everyone else, because I'm sure mm. everyone knows. But I'm going to do it anyway. No, Silent no, Hills Fog is a system that was made because they had too big of an open world map. Like the Silent Hill Outworld map is all there, and it's a large enough area that early gen consoles could not render it in. So to uh, get around that, they had a circle of fog where. Um, everything within the fog is generated and then a certain like measurement outside of the fog is generated in the direction you're moving and everything, you yeah, know, that makes so sense that to everything me. was always loaded in and everything was OK. And you could see this entire large map without it, like tanking your system, you know, and it ended up giving it this air that is absolutely unheard of in um, the fucking that era. You know, it's it was a different vibe things didn't do that can you still hear me yeah i can hear you i'm listening okay my uh my computer gave me the spinning wheel for a second i'm like oh no oh no not again so you know you take it to dead space a game that is shrouded in a lot of shadows a lot of darkness a lot of stark lights that play with shadow but mm -hmm. like why is someone knocking on my goddamn door is it your mom i'll be two seconds i'll be right back well now noah's wandered off leaving me in control of the podcast uh, this feels like a good time to say um, I don't like horror games. And while I'm, I'm glad for Noah, I am dreading playing this fucking game. Um, I do already have it uh, because we're going to do it as a stream game, but I'm not looking forward to it at all, actually. I know what you're thinking, Dan, why are you playing a game that you're not looking forward to? Um, it's because I have no self-respect and will do anything for content, quite frankly. Speaking of my roommate, that was pizza for him. That's very funny. Also, not... Not your roommate. Uh, neighbor. Upstairs neighbor. You yeah. know what I mean? I call him my roommate because it's the word that is easy. <laughs> that It's the wrong word. I know. It's, it's a very, it's like not even close to the right word, my friend. It is not. All right. <clears throat> Dead space operates in a lot of stark lights. But it doesn't need to like actively render a lot of these shadows because they're like, it's a static set piece, you know? So you get to have the drama of harsh shadows and then you get to have shitty live render shadows coming from like your enemies yeah and you know if you have a light behind the necromorph as it like lunges at you flailing everywhere you still get to see stark contrast outline with it flailing it still all works you know yeah I and totally get it. dan i'm so happy i am so happy to tell you the new dead space is really good i'm very glad like i played about 90 minutes of it now in fairness the game crashed once and that you know that sucks. I am not on a system that is built to run it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm doing what I can. <laughs> I'm doing my best, damn it. But yeah, you know, it's uh, it's made to be played on an SSD. Uh, it needs like 
two generations of graphics cards past me. Oh, buddy. Which it, it is what it is. But like once I downloaded new drivers, the game is running like OK. And it's it's gorgeous. It is absolutely gorgeous. I'm honestly they, um, very happy for you. Like there used to be the system used to be you'd go one spot to another on the tram system. Mm hmm. And that was cool and all, but each level was very distinctly its own then, you know, because you hopped on the tram and you traveled and that's it. They, in the second game, though, transitioned to no loading screens, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. As one, it's, as a uh, game does. Exactly. Like, and it was kind of ahead of its time on that one, because do you remember when, um, God, what Assassin's Creed was it? Was it Black Flag that was like, there are no loading screens in this game or I like... Think, I think it was, because I remember in... um revelations you still had to load to like go to it was almost no loading screen but you still had to load to like go to like completely new like if you were going to one of the other cities it would load kind of thing mm -hmm. maybe it was whichever one was set in america that od was the first oh, one not black flag the one before was it, it um, three three yeah so maybe it was that one maybe it was black flag regardless um have a sec when did this game come out 2013 okay dead space 2 came out two years before assassin creed black flag and that was the uh, that was the precedent that, that like they the, were yeah. like setting, you know, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. because of that, that game feels like really clean and polished compared to the first one. Now, um, you were there for my uh, my lowering of difficulty on stream where I, I had to lower from the high difficulty down to normal. I was. I think I made fun and of you for it even. You did <clears> make fun <throat> of me for it. And I I had said something in the moment about how the game wasn't scary anymore. It was just annoying me because of how much I was dying because I didn't manage my resources well an hour and a half ago. Yes. Which like, I think it's a very valid complaint. I don't mind a punishing game, but it, yeah, in that moment, it's like, no, I'm getting overrun in a tiny room that it's too hard to avoid everyone. It's just a badly designed spot. Yes. And I was watching a, I was watching a video essay and the guy was referring to it as a, an action game pretending to be a horror game. And I fully agree that that's actually what Dead Space 2 was. Okay. You know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But it had a lot of, like, function improvements. And when I heard that they were bringing those to Dead Space 1, I was like, all right, cool. Even if this is just a clean overhaul of all of the graphics and, like, UI, I'm Still excited worse. for the Dead Space remake. I think yeah. we talked about it before. I think we did because yes. we were talking about remakes versus sequels. Yes. yes and yes, you yes. had said, what would you rather have? Would you rather have a fourth Dead Space or would you rather have a remake of Dead Space one? And in a heartbeat, I said a remake of Dead Space one, because I think the first Dead Space has few enough problems that if a new one came out and bombed, the first one is still great. And I'm mm -hmm. not going to be mad about it. Yeah, yeah, Whereas yeah. Dead Space three had missed the mark so bad that I'm like, I don't want to deal with this anymore. You know? Yeah. And I'm so happy to to just say that the Dead Space remake took every good thing. When they said they were taking good things from two, I didn't expect them to actually change the game. I expected them to take like features. Yeah. But no, the tram system is just a fast travel now. Like you hop in it and you ride from one spot to another, but it is not the way the level changes. They added new areas to the game to traverse between levels and unlock the next tram station. So That's in the first area cool. to transition to chapter two, instead of hopping on the tram and going to the medical wing, you go down some back area and you go through these like just like maintenance tunnels, essentially to the medical wing and you That's unlock the uh, you unlock the fucking doodad while you're there. That's pretty good. Right. And because it's that you can transition between areas now without it being like a problem. So as soon as I got to the medical wing, I'm like, oh. I got my kinesis module here. I'm going to go back to the first area again and just grab a couple things that I know are there. Yeah. And I can do that because it has a fast travel. Yeah. Couldn't There's uh, some new doors that they put in that are um, their security code doors. These are like to the best of my memory. These are new items that you have to only can like unlock with proper security clearance. That's pretty cool. I like that. And because you can just kind of travel throughout the game. You can do that now. It's not a big deal. You can just be like, oh, yeah, you know, here I am. Um, got my new security clearance. Let's go back to sector one. And do so I can open up that like level one door. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I cannot stress enough how gorgeous this game is. And there's 
The second game used a lot of pitch black sections that you only see by your flashlight, mm -hmm. but Dead Space 1 didn't have a lot of those. It took that. It took that part too. There are moments when you have to choose whether you're going to power up an elevator or have lights on in the room. I love that. That's very cool. I know you don't actually love it. I know you love I, it conceptually and that I you're going to hate it. I love it conceptually, hate it in practice because I'm going to cry like a bitch. I am so happy that you have never played this game before. This is this is the big um, advertisement. Dan's playing this game in two uh, days. Uh, ideally, on Saturday. ideally, 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 I, I, I don't want to put that on there. With room to bitch out last minute. Dan well, is playing this on Saturday. Because I realized that I had made plans with people on Saturday, so I don't want to like lie to them. But OK, that's very reasonable. Um, but I am playing it. Yes. In, in general, in concept, I will be playing it at some point. And I'm really excited to see you play because playing it again, the tweaks that they've done to the beginning of the game just worked so well. And it yeah. made the beginning hit again. Which like, it wasn't before, yeah. I don't even know that it didn't before, but I knew what was coming. I wasn't yeah. afraid of the beginning, but the new tweaks made the beginning sequence. Anyone who has played Dead Space knows what the beginning sequence of the game is. It's the one where everything it goes is, to shit. Yeah, it is so much more hectic and nightmarish in the remake. And I, yeah, I've only played about uh, two hours of the game so far. I'm letting myself like take this in small bites because a <laughs> my computer, uh, I think, handles small bites the best. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I played for an hour straight and it crashed and I'm like, oh, don't want to do that again. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but, you know, I've downloaded more drivers and it's it's running better now. Like there would be I had a couple of little weird bugs where like a necromorph spawned in halfway through its scripted animation. Like yeah. something yeah, would yeah. pop out of a door and I knew it popped out the door, but it hadn't actually spawned Appeared, in. Yep. Yeah. But then I like I swang at it and it never spawned in. <laughs> and it's like, what the hell? It didn't kill me. It just didn't spawn in. Uh, there's a few little weird things like that, but can't wait for you to see it. I think you're really going to like it. I don't think I'm going to like it at all. No, nah, that's probably true. I think you will appreciate it. I think I will enjoy it for what it will give me, which is an absurd amount of content. There you go. No, uh, and accidentally. Also, oh. also <clears throat> go ahead. Good. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I'll come mm, back. I'll come mm. back to what I was going to say. No, you first. Because I don't want to make promises that I can't yet keep. I want you to make promises you can't keep. Okay. Uh, promises that I can't keep. Let's go. I ha was talking. So I, I told you about this earlier today because I think it's part partially as an ad thing and partially as a holy shit. Why am I doing this kind of thing? Mm -hmm. Um, But I found out that my my the app that I used to, con to, to control the lights in my room has two things one is like an overlay system where it can overlay over whatever you're over top of whatever you're playing on the like on the player side so like not just oh it's going to show up on the stream but like it actually can be in front of your game mm -hmm. uh, meaning you can do dumb things like let the chat flashbang you kind of thing uh which yeah. i've seen a couple people do um but the bigger one is that uh there's a heartbeat monitor integration actually there's a couple of them and i i have decided that in playing dead space i will be playing it in such a way that as my heart rate goes up, the lights in my room go down. Oh, I love that. Yeah, I thought you would. Oh, uh, that's really good. Yeah. Oh, my God. You're oh. going to get like murdered by a run. Uh huh. Oh, it's going to be rough, dude. I'm going to it's going to be a bad time at the El Royale. Um, it's me. I'm the El Royale in this metaphor. So true. <laughs> so true, bestie. But yeah, I'm very, very, very excited for it. I'm also very, very, very uh, nervous for it. Uh, but all this to say, the reason I'm bringing it up is because I, I told Michelle about this today. I just was off like chatting about, oh, this would be really fun to do. I'm going <clears> to, <throat> excuse me, I'm going to play some Dead Space uh, on stream. It'll be a good stream game, whatever. But I want to get this. And next, you know, I'm like, next time Twitch pays me, pays out, I'm going to pick this up. That woman bought it before I had finished talking to her about it. The heart, little heart monitor that I will need for it. Mm -hmm. She was that ready to be like, no, how about, <laughs> how about instead you go fuck yourself? <laughs> and i i love her for it and also fucking rude um but go on sorry not to not to talk too much about not to talk about my wife my wife so when i was talking about remakes there's other remakes i've been experiencing as well if you believe it i do i do believe it actually i was telling you earlier i've watched a lot of movies recently i mm -hmm. believe to um to date i've watched 20 movies so far this january Jeez. right and i'm not doing one a day it's like the second the, or the first, the second, the fifth, the eighth, the twelfth, the thirteenth, two on the fifteenth, three, two on the sixteenth, 
four on the 22nd. You know, I'm, I'm doing a, a wild roll here, you know, <laughs> but one movie uh, I watched recently was The Crazies. Do you remember hearing advertisements for that? Absolutely Like not. back in 2010? Mm-mm. So um, the idea of the movie is that you go out or you're out here living in this little town. A government plane crashed in your water supply and leached like chemical warfare shit into your water. Okay. And it all that it does is it makes everybody go crazy. Class. Hence the name. Yeah. Government realizes they made a mistake and... All they end up doing is purging the city. Classic. Like they literally, they just nuke the entire city to try and cover it up. You Classic know? government. Exactly. Government do be like in its nukes. Well, one thing I learned is that uh, this, <laughs> this was a remake. Oh. I didn't know it was a remake. It's a remake of a George Romero movie from the 70s. Damn. That all was right. an anti-Vietnam movie. Damn. All right. Yeah. This guy was like, hey, how would you feel if we did what we're doing over there here on u.s soil it's fucked up isn't it maybe we shouldn't do it you love me some anti-war propaganda let's go and i i was like wow i would never have guessed this was a remake this is an incredibly well-made movie i really liked this and while i was in a remaking kind of mood i'm like well there's another movie i haven't watched in a long time i remember it being kind of mid what if i watched it again so i watched 2005's house of wax oh no which is In name only, a remake of House of Wax from what, like the 60s? Sure. I have no idea. (laughs) The 50s? (laughs) (laughs) The past? So so, uh, it's technically a remake of House of Wax from 53. Jesus. Okay. Am I to take from your tone then that it is in fact bad? in, In practice, it is a remake of Taurus Trap from 79. It's, um, it's kind of, I don't know. It's, it's a mix of the two kind of, but it's more like tourist trap than it is like house of wax, but that isn't actually important. The important thing is I watched house of wax, which is if we're being honest, not a terrible movie, Okay, but it's not a good movie. It's actually, dare I say it kind of a bad movie that has some really amazing effects in it. I, I can get behind that. The problem is, and this is something that I I really have not actually realized. Mm. Is it that you like bad movies? No, it's how much the um, Dan, are you familiar with the term the male gaze? Oh, yeah, of course. Uh huh. And uh, I know a few of them even. But up, up, but up, up. Fuck you. I, I stand by that joke. That joke was great. A shout out to Fizzy. <laughs> <laughs> the malest gay I know. <laughs> yeah, no, that is. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> that is correct. <laughs> the gayest male, the male gay, maybe both. Who knows? It's not no, important. Who among us could possibly know for certain? <laughs> um, House of Wax is gross. Okay, there's what kind um, of gross? Like like gross male gay is gross. Yeah, I, there's like you know Paris Hilton's in it. I do now. No, no, I mean like that's like so I, there's I, there's I was, one ding you yeah, know like yeah, yeah, yeah. we got a Paris Hilton, but Paris Hilton isn't even the one that gets leered at in as much because there's like a lot of moments where it's just like yeah we're watching paris hilton be hot yeah but there's a really all enjoy i guess yeah exactly but there's a really weird moment at one point where the villain is restraining our heroine and it is unnecessarily sexual yep there's no reason for it to be the way it is it's actually like much worse super than uncomfortable. It is. Yeah, it's actually much worse that they have in fact made it the way that it is. Yeah, they, like he super glues her mouth shut to keep her from screaming um, <laughs> while restraining her. And that's like, you know, one of those like, ooh, that's bad. But then he makes some comment about how sad he is to glue her pretty little mouth shut. Icky. And it's like, oh, icky. I don't like that. No, I don't like that at all. I don't like that. No, not even a little bit. And I didn't I had forgotten in all of my um. All of my progressive glory, here I am, and the year of our Lord, 2023, people kind of throw around the term the male gaze really flippantly. Mm-hmm. And I think that we've like, as a culture, lost track of how bad it used to be. I think it's fair. Because, uh, no, this is this is not me saying, uh, and as uh, such, we should not care about it anymore, but like, half a sec. I can't believe Noah just said, as such, that we can't care, we shouldn't care about it anymore. On air, even. Unbelievable. How the mighty have fallen, truly. Half a sec, I have to find um I have to find the images I'm looking for. People have compared Wonder Woman and her outfit in Wonder Woman 
and Wonder Woman with her outfit in Justice League as one being a like normal outfit and the other being the outfit for the male gaze. And it's because the the one is like more simplified, straightforward. Oh, hey, look, it's a lot closer to our classic Wonder Woman design. And then the Wonder Woman movie is just a little bit more like thought through and like still classic Wonder Woman ish, but like a lot less that way, you know? Yeah, it doesn't feel as offensively. Uh, <clears throat> it's not as bikini armory, I guess yeah. it, it still is. But like people have like talked about it that way and it's like, OK, sure. But like the male gaze used to be you were watching a really uncomfortable scene that was meant to be sexy where you can borderline see the director like looking at you like, huh? Huh? Uh, uh. Or it's like, nice, right? Yeah, we'll take an entire shot where we just show off Paris Hilton in her underwear dancing to like some like bedroom music. No sex actually happens. So that's like it's progressive and cool, right? Right. Guys, guys. And yeah, yeah I don't know. It's it's like it's shit like that. Kind of like I had forgotten how bad things used to be. I feel like it also is, it's unfortunate because I feel like it's also very much a product of like. Like horror movies, I feel like hit get hit with that a lot more than most other genres. Mm -hmm. Like, don't get me wrong, it happens a lot of other genres as well. But like, they're like tits and blood are like a very common like B and C tier horror movie thing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and and frankly, that does that's not a thing that bugs me. You know, like nudity in movies is like, oh no. yeah, there's nudity in movies. This is just like it's it's kind of just a thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but I, but I mean specifically the like. In the like, leering way. In the leering way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what that's what like is so interesting to me is that like leering horror movies are so much less common now than they used to be. They are. Yeah, absolutely. And I hadn't thought about that until watching House of Wax. And I'm like, wow, I haven't seen a movie like this in so long. This is insane. Yeah, I would imagine. Oh, it, it was actually really neat. Like realizing that I'm like, oh hell yeah! Oh hey, we've evolved we have, just a tiny we have bit. Moved on. We aren't like this now. I love this. Not to that. Not to this extent, anyway. Yeah, I, I mean, you get you get that. You get a lot of like the evolution of movies of, alongside like the the modern like modern sensibilities, right? Mm -hmm. And it, it goes back to kind of the 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 phrase of like the phrase of like, oh, it wasn't okay then, but it's even less okay now. Mm -hmm. kind of thing like it was never it was never and I, you're you know you're talking specifically about the male gaze i'm thinking about a lot of like the way they treat literally anyone in a movie who's not a conventionally attractive straight white man right like yeah like even we watched the goonies the other day and oh, like that's got some rough moments doesn't that's it? got some rough fucking moments dude like the fact that even even as little as like the fact that his like the the name of the character is chunk god like, dude he sure is he sure is <laughs> But like even in that context, like that doesn't fly now. And it wasn't really OK then. And it's really, really not OK now. But it's it's interesting to watch these kind of grow. And like then there's the in, in film studies, there's a lot of conversations about, hey, you know, at what point do we just say, actually, this movie isn't even worth studying for its value as a like piece of history? Right. Like you get a lot of that with like things like Birth of a Nation. I, I got to be honest, it, it is rubbing me the wrong way to think of any of these things even remotely in the same like vein as that, because that's like. But the, it, it's still like an evolution of it. Like it's still like when Birth of a Nation came out, it was a movie that went out in theaters. People went and saw it. And yeah. I it's, it, it's, it, it's an extreme example, but it is still in my mind the kind of the same evolution of like sensibilities and like. The idea of, hey, maybe we shouldn't be shitty for the sake of being shitty or, hey, maybe we shouldn't make movies about certain topics. Because for me, as somebody who like does not have any positive association with like what I maybe what maybe might be like lecherous horror, would that be like a good way to phrase it? I mean, lecherous horror isn't really as much like it's not even a huge thing then. Like, but I'm, I wouldn't even call House of Wax lecherous horror. There was just like gross moments in it. But I, I f fair, but those gross moments still like, I don't know. I, I, I don't, I only ever think I, like I, that's the kind of thing that would make me be like, wow, this movie is bad and I will never watch it again and have no interest in telling people about it and no interest in seeing it. And it's bad. Right. And that's not like, Oh, I'm better than you by any stretch. It's just like that kind of thing is, is a massive pain point for me. It, it's like, I can't watch it. I, like I would have turned the movie off just cause like, that's the kind that's, I just can't like, I can't stomach that sort of thing. 
but where I'm going with this is that like it's it's it is really interesting to see that these these things like they evolve, right? They evolve and they grow and they change. And it's very cool to kind of see, oh, hey, like this doesn't fly anymore. And in some ways, yeah, there's still problems. Like you said, you know, male gaze is, I think, a really good example of it. That Like there are mm-hmm. still problems that like we look at and we're like, wow, this hmm, yikes. But oh, it's I, nothing like what it used to be by any stretch. I get really um, sketchy around the idea of like moralizing the stuff that I watch that much. I like I there's, a, there's nothing wrong with with that at all. I want to be like totally clear. I try to avoid it because there's so much stuff that like I very much enjoy that gets written off because of what it is that it's not even actually bad. It's just what it is, Uh, which has just been maybe that's just like a a difference in um, how we grew up, maybe Uh, because not like we <laughs> two people from very similar upbringings but like as a not, guy who was not like that much i mean yes reasonably no. similar reasonably similar upbringing yes 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 um as a guy who was like who grew up in the church um being told that like watching horror movies and listening to metal music like being told that what i enjoyed doing that was like generally harmless mm-hmm. was actually horrifically bad and that like I'm bad because of it Mm -hmm. uh, has got me uh, pretty consistently in a defensive mood about the kind of stuff that I like valid. And that's extremely fair, Uh, which is why I don't like to I don't like to like write things off just because like I don't maybe like it's something that I don't like, but I don't try to write things off too much. Like I I've made this joke about Jeff a lot. Shout out Jeff for the horror movie podcast, casual obsession, the horror movie podcast where we talk about horror movies. Jeff will watch a movie that they didn't like two or three times just in case they missed it just in case the point didn't quite hit them the first time and i can't wrap my mind around that but like that's what i try to be like maybe this is like this very very like well-regarded thing maybe i just don't get it and sometimes it actually does work sometimes i do realize and i find the thing that i didn't like and i think that and i think that is extraordinarily fair right like and i and i don't I, i apologize if i came off as if i was like saying that enjoying the like that sort of thing is bad because that definitely I, that de- was not my intention by any stretch. I don't find the I don't find the I phrase this. I don't find people who watch like like we're gonna we're gonna use House of Wax like right. I I don't mm-hmm. find I don't think there's any problem with you watching House of Wax. I will oh literally <laughs> never watch it like so like just out of like because I can't stomach that sort of thing. Not even in, like a horror sense, just in like a yikes sense and again i'm not trying to make myself like i'm not trying to put myself on a fucking pedestal if anything i think that like you and jeff are doing the thing you should be doing which is seeing things for what they are and not for how you feel about them it is but and yet it is also still the way i engage with a lot of media is i i'm very not very very quick but i'm more than willing to just say i hate this because of one thing and write it off because I, I will say, um, I feel like you might be getting a wrong idea about how much is in House of Wax, because 99 percent of the movie is a normal movie. And there the, are like two scenes that are like, ew. I think you're underestimating how willing I am to write things off. I it, can't imagine living like that. It's it's I totally understand. I am not even, I, like I said, I'm not even going to sit here and be like, I am right for doing it. I am, like I, it is simply I will watch movies with certain content in it anymore if i know it's there i'm just not going to be it's going to actively make me dislike the movie at a base level and and that and like things like fucking um great like for me big big example uh the first indiana Indiana jones actually most indiana jones and most early james bond for that matter big ick out of like the male leads in those movies i i love love the original indiana jones i cannot tell you the last time I watched them because I just can't bring myself to enjoy them as much as I once did because of it. Like I Mm -hmm. like the fact that uh, the whole Miriam under underplot in the first Dana and the Jones squicks me out so much that it colors the entire movie for me. And there are obviously exceptions and like, like, you know, everything is, everything is a spectrum. Like I'm not going to just like, I try to, you know, enjoy movies for what they are. I try to like enjoy parts of them and, and, you know, not, double down on the parts that i don't like but it most movies that i watch that have like a a uh, womanizer or like very like i don't even what would you even call like the indiana jones like early james bond like stereotype like what is that what is that word 
a womanizer? I guess. Yeah. A lot I guess. Of, I, I guess. Right. Like, it doesn't feel quite right. But a lot of movies that have that, like the only reason I still wa- I've watched Indiana Jones in the last decade, despite it having been one of my favorite movies, is because I grew up with it. Right. Like they're the, ex- the big exception are things that I grew up with because I, I can stomach those a little more a little more easily. And again, I, I need to, I need to keep re- repeating it because I feel like I'm, I'm coming across as like a holier than thou asshole. I, I am not saying that I am better than people for this. I, am I mean, not. you definitely are. But you have also clarified that that's not how you feel about it, which is a, a good like clarifier. <laughs> no, I am not better than people for this. This is this is a me problem, not a me like good thing. I, I am telling people that that, mm-hmm. that I am I am too up my own ass about it. Not that like anyone is bad for enjoying the things they enjoy. I had um it it's um. Oh, God, uh, fucking in a weird way. The weird uh, it is going to be a little weird, weird comparison. Fucking I think when when, it, when we were talk, when we did our talk about um, Christmas songs, we offhandedly were like, baby, it's cold outside. Bad. Mm-hmm. Write it off. Like if you but it but we also said, I think something to the effect of. But like also it's kind of a boring take, right? Like everyone knows baby, it's cold outside is is kind of icky. Even if you look at it in the context of like. It's a flirtatious song and like they're like under the context of the times. It's not supposed to feel as icky. Like, I feel like there's there's calling it kind of it, calling it icky and not what not listening to it because of it is kind of a boring take. Is that because yeah, there's a lot of like, I think especially with movies, there's things that like I don't enjoy like certain. Th- I, I'm not going to come up with any examples because I'm going to get like too deep into trying to like think of a specific movie. Exactly. Totally right? fair. But there's like a lot of things that I do not care for, Mm -hmm. but like like stories that I don't like, there's elements that I find very uncomfortable and things I don't like, but they service a larger narrative. And because of that, I'm very willing to watch it because it's just like it's neat. It's it's cool to like experience new things that or like stories that have like big highs and lows that happen to also contain subject matter that I'm like, eh. That sucks that that happened. That's fair. And, and like like I said, I think that's like the right way to look at this. Like, I think specifically because you mentioned James Bond, um, because James Bond is a great example of let's sit down and watch a movie where a very misogynistic man fights for king and country or queen mm-hmm. and country. I think it was king and country then. Uh, no, no, it definitely wasn't. Think how old the queen was. But there was a king for a while, wasn't there? I don't know. No, it was always no, queen. it's always been God. Queen, yeah. So yeah, for queen and country. Yeah. God damn. Yeah. She was ancient. That 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 bird fucking just would not go. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck her, man. Fuck her. You know, I watched those movies um, based on books written by Ian Fleming, a uh, a race science guy who's like, Yikes. oh, yeah, some people are really dumb because their heads are too small. And those people are certain races, you know, God, like I that sure kind of guy. Disco Elysium. God, I, I'm so I, I love that game so much. I know. I just can't finish it. I just I every time I pick it up, I, I, I put it down again and I'm like, oh, yeah, I'll get back to this. And then I have completely lost track of where I was by the time I pick it back up again. Well, just start over again. Then yeah, I've done you? that like six times. I know <laughs> it's so bad. I, think I watched you start the game three times and mm-hmm. I assumed the first two times. Wow. It comes back to this scene a lot with the guy in the backyard. And it's like, technically, yes, but I saw the same scene three times. Mm-hmm, <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But, you know, it's I watch these and in my mind, I'm like, yeah, I can separate the fact that this is humongously problematic source material and everything like that, because I'm watching it as like what it is with hmm, sucks that he's like this. But like you also watch these movies and while later movies do too much work at condemning the actions of Mm -hmm. Bond, it's a huge issue in the Pierce Brosnan era where you have Judy Dench as M saying you're a sexist, misogynistic, racist dinosaur or whatever. And it's like, all right, you didn't have to say that to the audience. Like, it's kind of it's kind of everyone knows. weird to say it like that. Yeah. Uh, calling him an outdated relic of the Cold War. And it's like, that's fine. But like adding everything else, it's like, oh, why, why are you being like that? Like, there's a more subtle way to get across. Hey, we had a we had a bit of a past there, didn't we? But we're moving on. But then they don't. Or, you know, you tackle the character in a different way. But I like the stories that like comes with it. So I'm like, OK, I'm just going to sift out the parts that I like. Eh, you know, it sure does suck that every girl Bond loves dies. But man, that's just the the tragic hero. It's definitely not just because they couldn't write a female role. But then, you know, here we are in the second Bond movie with Pussy Galore. 
Yikes. Like, what a name. But Yikes. she's like a very fiercely independent woman. <laughs> With the exception of her name, a great character. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I think that that like like there is still things to enjoy out of movies with problematic themes, characters, ideas, like um, locations, etc. Right. Um, hmm. I've said this a couple of times that it. like it's a it's a real shame. And I mean this. You're going to hear the biggest butt in history, and I need you to please bear with me and okay, understand where it, I'm coming yep, from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, the racism in all the old Bond movies is a bad thing. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> <laughs> in their moving away from stuff like that, we lost amazing set pieces. Like, there's this one set in India, and boy, oh boy, is it, it waffles in wildly. Between treating people from India with respect and not. Mm -hmm. And who boy, that's not ideal. The movie's called Octopussy, by the way. Mm -hmm. It's I about a traveling Octopussy. circus. I sure do. Mm -hmm. I've watched all of them. Uh, well, most of them over the years. Just not nice. lately. I watched all of them um, over the last two years. I know. Uh, you I remember know, you, quarantine you does a them. wild thing to you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you have a lot of... Um, you know, back in the day, a lot of Bond movies were set out in like the Caribbean, in the colonies, because mm -hmm. that's a topical area for England. Then they still were the colonies, in fact, you know, before Yikes. they became their own thing. Like, that's how old some of this stuff is. Mm -hmm. And there's these insanely cool set pieces. And then we get to modern era and every Daniel Craig movie is like, yeah, it's uh, it's in Europe. Yeah. Yeah. And it's. These set pieces are so boring, and I wish that the Bond writers would find a way to, yes, please, remove the racism and offensive caricaturization mm -hmm. of cultures. But please bring back these great set pieces that were like, they were neat. Like, oh, cool, the last Craig movie take, like, its final act is in an old Cold War Russian missile silo. Pretty God, that's silo. boring. Okay. Oh, it's a well, cool idea, but like you're looking at flat cement everywhere. That's the whole building I, is gray cement. I think it's an interesting thing of like, at, and, and I understand that like at big asterisk, like we're, we're about to start talking about like race stuff uh, as two white men. Uh, mm -hmm. I get it, but whatever. We can still have opinions. I think it's really interesting because I think that the, the struggle, air quote struggle, and I say air, struggle with air quotes, but struggle mm -hmm. for Hollywood is a lot of like, how do you make a villain part of a culture without saying this is what that culture is yeah well I, that's the thing is it's never even been the villains so much like yes obviously there's been some there are certain villains you know um live and let die every villain is black and practices voodoo exactly not ideal you know um dr no is the most um british allegedly chinese man you'll ever see a lot of stuff like that but for the most part you're looking at the same eastern european villain in new locations each mm -hmm. movie it's the russians it's the russians it's the russians it's mostly the russians <laughs> even now it's still the russians yep that's well and i think the thing is is that like even us saying it's always the russians right mm -hmm. it is kind of the problem right it's it's the thing in um what is the what is the one in uh the first back to the future oh god i have no idea um is it is it Russians? No, it's not. Too? No, it's not. It's something ridiculous. Back to the future. Who is after Doc? Uh, the the who shoot who shot Doc? There we go. Spoiler alert, I guess. The Libyans Damn, for a, in Back to the Future. The, it's the Libyans. Yeah. And like they just threw a dart at the world, didn't they? It, well, that's exactly it, though. Like the Libyans are like two guys in a fucking. <laughs> Like they're two, two guys in a fucking plumber's van in a plum fucking plumber's van. Like they are not when you say the Libyans, it is quite literally two Libyan people, not or two people from Libya, rather not the Libyan government. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think that, that is kind of like the 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 problem with a lot of these, at well, least in, in my fairness for the Bond movies, it's actually the communists and the communists happen to also be the Russians. It just works out that way. <laughs> How convenient. But I think that it's interesting that like I think it is really like how do you how do you engage in a culture? It's something that I, I ran into a couple of times when I was writing in college. How is like how do you engage in a culture that you're not a part of without without being deeply problematic about? It? And the answer is obviously like 
get people who are of that culture to advise you on it right well you just have to be like, chill about it like well but like, like and like also yes you need advising but like you can appreciate something without being weird about it and well but i think that like, that's um uh, brian david gilbert yes was where was he was he in japan i don't remember he was overseas in an asian country and i feel terrible for not remembering these details Damn. um his Racist. girlfriend is from like culturally from that country he wanted to go and appreciate what was going on but he didn't want to come off as like a weird white guy doing the stuff mm -hmm. so in the background of every picture that he's in there's his girlfriend pointing at him and giving the thumbs up that's hysterical. so that people online wouldn't think that he was being weird when he's going around in like these like silk robes and stuff that's hysterical right <laughs> that is deeply funny and that's the way you do it dan you just have to get you just have to get your girlfriend to point at you saying yeah this is fine <laughs> well and th but like that's kind of the thing right is it's like how do you and well, and i'm thinking also like kind of in a broader sense like broader than like antagonists right mm -hmm. uh, protagonists uh one of the most the one that uh, my parents always brought up was speedy gonzalez right God, what a guy. What, what a guy. A, what a dude Speedy Gonzalez well, is. Well, and, and it's it's this weird thing of like, I know people who look at Speedy Gonzalez and says, damn, it's crazy that we I, that we had representation. And then you I, I also like take a broader look at it. I'm like, yeah, yeah, there was representation. But like, is this what this is what you wanted to be represented as? Keep Speedy. Speedy was big at the time. Sure. It's like, um, what is it? South of the border. Jackson was talking about. Remember that? Yeah, 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 of course. Or was it you talking about it? No. Uh, was it you? I know of it, yes. Maybe it was Dave. Someone was talking about it, and it has this really offensive looking Mexican guy. Yep. Who, when you look back in the history, it's actually this guy was like, Yeah, I'm gonna fuck up the clan. Let him come down here and try and fight me. Mm -hmm. I love my Mexican employee. I love him so much that he's borderline our mascot. Everyone here loves him so much. You know, like where it's like now it's like eh, yeah you know what maybe that's not that great but like at the time at the, it's one of those things where like speedy specifically it's like yeah but we've moved on from needing like speedy to be a representative of anything yeah yeah and and it's it's like i don't know it's just, it's how and because there's an argument made of like like in that almost exactly in that same vein of like it is a you know like south of the border the mascot is a celebration of is intended to be a celebration of this person, mm -hmm. this culture, this idea. And that's literally but, one of the reasons that I try not to worry myself too much about what I do anymore, because the further away you get from something that's meant to be a celebration, like we're going to pass a point eventually where this isn't going to be as true, but the further away you get from something that's meant to be good, you can twist it into being a bad thing. True. You Absolutely. know, like there's some objective goods out there, but for the most part, there are things that are steps where anyone in the future is going to be able to point at like things now and be like, oh, you thought it was great when gay people were allowed to be married. Wow. Congratulations. Let me clap my hands for you, you fucking assholes. You thought that was a big deal. It's like, well, at the time it was. It was. Yeah, it was a big thing then. Mm -hmm. And it's now it's like like even now, you know, it's yeah, how it's few like what's it been like 11 years when yep. did it happen? 2012, 2015? I don't fucking know. I was I was not uh, dialed in at the time, as it were. Let me find out. History, blah, 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 blah. 2013. It has been... No, okay, 2015. It was in 2015 when it was initially struck down. It has been seven years, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's just like, yeah, this is fine. This is mm -hmm. normal. We're yeah. here now. Yeah. And then suddenly out of nowhere... With the new Supreme Court, they're like, what if we got rid of that one? What if, what if we got rid of the gay marriage? And it's like, hey, what the fuck, guys? Excuse? It's been seven years, dude. We're, we're, this has been around as long, if not longer than the Confederacy. <laughs> we're moving on. We've moved I really on. Love, I, side note, really love comparing the length of things to the length of the Confederacy. Hysterical bit. 10 out of 10. Love it. <laughs> right. It's, it's one of my favorite things, like how many of like things that are nothing mm -hmm. the, the Doritos longer. Locos Taco baby did it go away at any point uh not for any meaningful amount of time nice shout out to the Doritos Locos Taco yeah the average Taco Bell menu item lasts longer exactly 
I don't know. I that's it's such, a, it's such a good example. But like, it's so funny. You know, like we look at that, like at this, and it's like, why are you taking a big step back? People in the future will be like, why did you think that was a big step? Yeah. You know. So I. Well, and it, yeah. it, there's a, there's a certain amount of like I agree I, I agree 100 percent and I think it's it's like one of those things of like you look back at uh what is it Star Trek right Star Trek had the first interracial kiss on television one little mm-hmm. trivia fact um oh I want to shit on Shatner as soon as you're done with oh this no too. We, we don't need to shit on Shatner he's a piece of human garbage and like whatever good he did in the past has been outweighed by the bad he's done in his older years. It's- my favorite thing, I'm, I promise I'm going to come back to you. I no, cannot. Go no, go not, for it. Please, okay. please, please, please. The man who was part of the first interracial kiss on television, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. who is like such a like a beacon of progressiveness or was then, anyway. now says the new Star Trek is too woke and Gene would have hated it. I knew Gene. <laughs> he would hate what's happening. Are you sure, man? Gene was Gene was pushing fucking boundaries everywhere. That was his thing. I think he'd love to see new Star Trek. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think he'd be thrilled with it. If he wasn't mad at DS9, he's definitely not mad now. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. And it's so funny to me that the man who he used to be so big in that stuff now is just like he's so comfortable resting on his laurels and regressing back like to being a shitty old man. To never being any more progressive than his most progressive moment in the 50s. Mm hmm. Like, that's the limit for him. And it's so interesting to see, like, someone who thinks that they stayed relevant in that, like, field. Yeah. Although it it is very cool to know that he went to space and came back with this wild sense of, like, meaninglessness. And he's like, I got to do more. I got to do more here on Earth. I'm doing jack shit. I'm like, I mean, nothing. You kidding me? I got to I got to make my mark in the world. (laughs) Uh, I mean. That is, I feel like everyone's. Re- I'm gonna be honest. I think that should be most re- people's reaction to going to space. But regardless, yeah, the fact that Bezos came down with just a big goofy grin and he's like, "Yeah, we went to space," and that was like his entire takeaway. And meanwhile, like Shatner had like a uh, a world shattering revelation, a big like world shattering, shat- world, world shattering, moment. world shattering, if you will, a world shattering <laughs> moment. Old <laughs> Billy Shats up there is like, "Holy shit, man!" <laughs> Billy Shatspear. No, I don't I don't think that he's actually changed that much. <laughs> no, but and it's even to pull an actually more like progressive guy in general. Well, let's look at fucking Mark Hamill. Like, yeah, lo- yeah. Like going to bat for rolling stand or speaking her truth to power. Like, and that's what he was liking that tweet for of rolling being like weird and transphobic mm-hmm, It's like, mm-hmm. oh, it's not the transphobia I liked it for. It was actually this totally other thing. Don't worry about but it. But it's like it's like, all right, Mark, you're on like. You You're fell right. through the thin ice. Like, I know where you stand on this and you're just like trying not to anger your fan base. Or even if he's not like on her side, he has no concept of how damaging that type of attitude can be. No, not a, not even a little. And I think that that the, and it's it, it's so it's fuck. I was going to I had something about Shatner and I'm, I'm blanking on it now. Fuck. Oh, I'm sorry. No, you're totally um, fine. First in a racial kiss way back when. Uh, oh, we were talking about stepping stones and how like the first oh, yeah. in a racial kiss like in hindsight like why did we think that was a big deal it shouldn't have been a big deal but like but like at the time it was we were still segregated not yet yeah, clearly it was a huge fucking deal the fact that they tried to get them to redo the takes and the and the actors had to keep intentionally bo- botching takes so the take would make it to television is insane mm-hmm. like that shouldn't have had to happen but the fact that it happened is important and it's like it's it's um relevant still because i'm sorry i'm like i'm like working our way back backwards to the conversation we have drifted yeah, right Back started to... just chatting about remakes and now we're talking about like race theory uh race theory. i can't believe that we're critical of race theory that's so crazy so uh, true <laughs> please no wait hold on i don't want to i don't stand by that one hold on go back go back undo <laughs> you heard uh, it here first <laughs> dan is critical of race theory um uh, fuck um villains villains as as minorities minorities as villains there we go mm-hmm. that's where i wanted to get circle all the way back to got it. <laughs> it and like specifically other cultures as both reference points in your world and also as inspiration for your world um, oh yeah that's what we god we we no we drift. we Fuck drifted man. dude i've had a lot of conversation with cap about the 
villain slash villain and culture both i've had a lot of conversations with cap about the way that the lizard folk in in uh, warhammer fantasy are portrayed i might have even talked about it on the podcast at one point and how i find it super problematic and time and again the the thing that cap keeps coming back to is that the while it is clearly inspired by 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 like middle american like or sorry, Central American and South South American cultures. It is never in a look at these savages. It is very much a like literally they are like the most technically advanced race in Warhammer Fantasy. Like they have spaceships. It is never it is never demonized and it is always praised as like, look at how neat these guys are. And I think it's really interesting and difficult to land in a way that doesn't still feel icky at first glance. And even at, at deeper glance, like it, it's it's hard to find that balance because like it, it's also and it, I think it's also a little unfair to be like, you cannot take inspiration from real world cultures. And obviously mm-hmm. that's not what anyone's saying. That is a straw man argument and a half. But I think that it is a there is a for a time, even as I was as I was again, as I was a, when I, back when I was more problematic, like definitely had that question of like, how the fuck do I write? How the fuck do I write these things if I'm not allowed to like like essentially reference the culture at all and the answer is obviously that you you can just don't be like you said don't make don't be weird about it kind of thing and i know that doesn't really answer questions but like it is also i think the cleanest answer to how do i be better about this thing it's just yeah dude if you're it, like the the um like if your culture is inspired by a real world culture, make sure a it's different enough so that it's not a one to one, and b make sure it's not trying to say anything about the real world co- real world equivalent. Like, and in in the way of like, kind of the like like the still cycling back to James Bond, that like it's is it a problem that ever, that all the villains in uh, I don't remember which one you said are, uh, are live black, and let die are black and yes there's nothing that there's actually no way to get past that one <laughs> no and that's what i'm saying <laughs> that no is rough. that a problem of course of course it's a fucking problem does that mean you shouldn't have black villains also no like what the fuck of course not that's i, I mean, was that's a ridiculous you know, take i was actually seeing someone um this is something nina and i've talked about a little bit where it's like I, oh man i wish people, nina were here i think she'd have like a great opinion on all of this. The hottest of takes about some of these things in a good way. There yeah. are people who say, who, who try to get mad if there's quote unquote bad gay rep. No. But when they say bad gay rep, they're not talking about like, ha ha, hello, limp wrists. Like, uh, they're talking about villains who are gay. Thing. No, exactly. They're talking about gay people doing bad things. And it's like, we've like, that's, that's one of those things where it's like, we've moved past the era of like, Having to caring kind of about that well and, and like that's, we're, we've moved on to a point where it's like we can we can have people who are villains who happen to be gay they're not gay because they're a villain mm-hmm. this is just normal <laughs> yeah yeah and like you you can have characters who are gay coded and like very clearly intended and still be villains and that still isn't like the point of them right it's still not like mm-hmm. oh because of this and this um like every Disney villain was like they couldn't have a gay character in the movie and all the people who were like fucking working on these like movies were gay. Mm-hmm. And they're like, ah, you know what? Here we are. Um, Looking at you, LeFou. I guess I guess. Oh, well, and see, I wasn't thinking of LeFou. I was thinking of fucking um, what's his name in Aladdin? Oh, Jafar. Jafar. Yeah, yeah. Jafar, is, Jafar is actually pretty gay, Cody. You're very Jafar right. is gay as hell. <laughs> no, Jafar is pretty gay. And because people are like, well, you know, we want we want him. Or like, uh, what's her name from Little Mermaid? The mermaid. Uh, um, Ursula. Ursula. Ursula literally yeah, is just queen. like, yeah, a classic drag queen of the era mm-hmm. who they were like, cool. Uh, yeah, she's our squid monster now. Well, you know, th- because they like they wanted their people in the movies and they're like, hey, we're going to put people in the well, movies, whether the bigots like it or not. This is a great, a great example, because I think that it's so it's such an interesting take of like the more I, I think the answer to ha- like g- genuinely my like the, I think the, to kind of bring this back to a point is I think the answer to how do you like how, how is it OK to have gay villains is also also have also have gay heroes. Like if the like when that's not the only actually point that's of, woke when when that's not the only point of representation right when that's not the only if you're only if your only female character in a movie is the villain that's not great that's mm-hmm. just not ideal it if if they are one of a cast of 
like actual characters who some of whom happen to be women. That's a different game. It's it's really interesting. And, and I do think there is a certain amount of difficulty to it um, as somebody who like is trying to, so desperately not to like not to be a shit bag. It's trying so desperately to get, away, get to move on from his shit bag era. Mm hmm. It's interesting and difficult, and and it's a conversation that's really hard, I think, for me to have sometimes that, like, I don't know how to, like, frame it in a way that doesn't come across as being shitty um, or come across as being like, ah, oh, yes, me, a white man knows exactly what's best for Hollywood cinema. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I do. I think that's I, like in my in my humble opinion, I do think that like that the answer is like just. The answer is not, oh, you can't have villain representation. You can't have bad gays. You just also then have to have, even if not in that same thing, it's not even like a, oh, your movie has one villainous LGBTQ person. Therefore, they also must have one heroic. Yeah, because have it be like a trade. That's that's just much as worse. Bad. That's so much worse. But it's it's in the broader like cultural sense, have more representation. The more representation you have, the more freedom you have to put characters in roles and not have it be a weird thing yeah like there's it's annoying is what it is because every time we try like the the new last of us episode i don't uh, watch the I, show i've not watched but show, i know so no spoilers. i know it's uh well i i know game, it's so no all over the yeah, neither have i i don't give a shit um the most recent episode was super fucking sad it was described oh, to me yeah, as i did hear about this the beginning yep. of up but about <laughs> a gay couple mm -hmm, and an hour long yeah, an hour long version of the beginning of Up. And I've seen people who are like, oh, Last of Us went woke. And it's like, shut the fuck up. Are you still in 2023 saying woke? It's well, not 2012 I, anymore. Get your and, head out your ass. And that Grow is, up. Get with the times or fucking die. <laughs> Please just die faster. Well, and I think that is, in fact, the problem is that like there are as much as you and I can sit here and be like, oh, why are you acting like this? It's 2023. There are people who are still acting like this. No, that's that's the thing that like frustrates me so much is how are you going to live and be so devoted to being a piece of shit that you see something that just isn't good for you and you're like, you see, this is this is the problem with wokeness today. And I under I understand fully this is a white supremacy thing. Like, because most of the people who complain about this mm -hmm. are white people who are used to being in charge. Correct. And then they have something that's not catered to them and it pisses them off. Yes. correct. And they make it into a problem with society rather than maybe I should be less of a bigot. And yeah, it doesn't only happen here. There are other countries that are not like predominantly white. It's, it's just a shittiness thing. You don't have to be like a white supremacist to have shitty takes. Other mm -hmm. people have bad takes too. It's just all white supremacists have bad takes. <laughs> Not all bad takes some are from other white people <laughs> exactly <laughs> it's squares and rectangles S squares and rectangles <laughs> you guys white supremacists are like squares and rectangles <laughs> you can hit both of them with a hammer that's true <laughs> and you should for legal reasons we do not condone you hitting people with a hammer for legal reasons for legal reasons i removed a very great idea that dan just <laughs> said you can infer what it could be based on what i have been saying <laughs> for legal reasons long beep sound <laughs> god uh so to move us away into a lighter topic Please, to round yes. out yes, the yes, end yes, of our yes. episode we, we have gone we have gone places this evening goofy things that i love to do let me just like do a wild 180 blow out all four of my tires on the highway moment <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 no okay i'm on board there's nothing funnier to me than rather than tactfully editing around a touchy thing when a pre predominantly comedy based media lets the whole thing stay in silenced <laughs> and it's just like a long sensor sound where it's just like and especially when like in our situation, you know, we have three live mics, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. since we're not in the same room, you don't get picked up on my mic. Correct. So I can actually like if I kept the whole thing in, I could like you could be like, hey, why don't you do this thing? Why don't you do this thing? And then you could hear me in the background going over the top of the beep. You can just hear. <laughs> please do not do oh, Dan, thing. please. Dan, wait, Dan, wait. No. Oh, God, Dan, stop. But there's just like this 10 second like beep where it's like you don't know what Dan is saying, but you hear me going, no, wait, stop. And Jackson going, hey, 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 lighter noises. 
<laughs> and that's, that's that is like, that is the dynamic. You are correct. <laughs> it's oh, you missed it last week, man. He he has a, he had a whole visual cutaway that he didn't even think about the fact that it was a visual cutaway until we finished. An audio it was a medium. pre-recorded bit that was him with a butane lighter that says fishing is calling on it. What will you do? <laughs> it looks like an iPhone screen. It was hilarious. And he's like, oh, that was a visual gag. Uh-oh. <laughs> he's sitting there in the video clicking this lighter on and off. <laughs> I'm, I, dude, I love doing this. But yeah, that's that's one of my favorite forms of comedy that people can do is, yeah, we, you know, technically we have to remove this. But like, <laughs> you you know what we want you to do. You know. <laughs> you know. Oh, you. Yeah, I love it. I love it. It's it's a silly, uh, a silly thing that I very much enjoy. All that to say, uh, play Dead Space. Yes. And, and if you get time, come hang out with me when I play Dead Space. It will be in my stream schedule eventually. I'm, I'm so excited to watch you play Dead Space. I'm going to cry. I'm going to get myself boozed up and I'm going to cry the whole time. Like, I. Dead Space is what made me fall in love with horror. I've had like a few moments of realization. It was like, oh, this was it. This was it was Dead Space. Dead Space was the first horror thing that I ever actually experienced around the same time I watched Dead Space. I also watched Nightmare Before or Nightmare, not before Nightmare Christmas, before Nightmare Christmas. on Elm Street. Yeah, I, I almost Nightmare said Nightmare Before Elm Street. And I'm like, that's not right. I watched Nightmare Before Christmas. And let me tell you, it changed me. You know, like <laughs> emo kids everywhere be like, <laughs> mm, fair, but also. Uh, I watched, you know, Nightmare on Elm Street and I didn't really dig it at the time. I'm like, oh, this is so scary. This is the scariest shit I've ever seen. And I didn't know if I wanted to watch it again. I bought it, but I didn't know if I wanted to watch it again. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, Meanwhile, mm -hmm. I played Dead Space and I'm like, holy shit, this is the best thing I've ever played. I love this game. And I'm just beyond thrilled that the remake is actually not bad. It's actually actively good. I'm also really glad, to be honest. Much joy does that bring me. And I, I can't wait for you to experience it, even though I know you're not going to like it at all. I Because I, once you finish it, I get to make you play Dead Space 3 with me, that, uh, which is I'm skipping I cannot. Two. I mean, you can play two if you want to. <laughs> want but two. Um, I'm you know, I, I had something spoiled for me. Apparently, there's a secret ending in the new Dead Space that hints that Dead Space 2 might get a remake, which like no That's, shit buddy. Yeah, duh. of course, it's going to get a remake. If this move, this game, this movie, fuck, man. This game has sold so well, mm -hmm. as far as I know. Um, let's see. Did Dead Space have a good launch? 2023. I guess it's really not talking about that yet because uh, it's only been out for three days. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so we'll find out later. <laughs> we'll find out <laughs> next time on. But, you know, like, I really hope they make the second one again because I think that would be a lot of fun. But you could play Dead Space 2. Or I could catch you up on what happens in Dead Space 2 and we can play Dead Space 3 together because I've never played the co-op. for. Let me. OK, I know we're running long. We're running I know we're so running a little long. long, but I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Jackson, not I here to stop us. <laughs> Jackson, the guy that definitely cuts us short when we go long. Correct. Um, Dead Space 3. We might have talked about this before, but I'm going to talk about it now. Did this wildly insane thing because Dead Space 1 and 2 were critically very well acclaimed, but the sales were only okay. Same. But because they were so critically acclaimed, they kept making games. Mm -hmm. And Dead Space 3 came out, and the fans were so excited for Dead Space 3. But, you know, it's a horror franchise. It's got... It's a cult following kind of thing. You know, like, Silent Hill, to, you know, call back to that one, it's never been, like, a huge on-launch game. Mm -hmm. That's, like... But it's cult following now is massive. Yeah. People huge. love Silent Hill now. And people thought Silent Hill was OK then. Same kind of thing with Dead Space. So when Dead Space 3 came out, the fans were like stoked. The final part of the trilogy, like we keep getting more Dead Space. This is amazing. And then EA was like, what if we put in microtransactions? Yikes. What if we put in, hear me out. What if we put in co-op? And there's an entire story arc buried under co-op that you can only access through co-op that's dumb it's so weird like it's a single player survival horror that's the first game the mm -hmm. second game is a single player action horror 
that is so much stingier on the ammo and money. Very frustrating. <laughs> the third game is, hey, isn't it cool if you can build your own gun? There's a top and bottom module, so you can make your own custom gun and do whatever you want with it, which means that you can min-max a gun. In a game that's very much in, up to that point, not about that. Exactly. And it um, it unifies all the ammo is one ammo type, which is a terrible thing because part of the fun was budgeting your ammo and you using know? your favorite gun when you only only when you need to. Exactly. Like I went through Dead Space one, uh, you know, man sits and complains the game's too hard, made it harder for himself. I played Dead Space one on stream a little while ago using only the plasma cutter. There's an achievement for it and I wanted it, you know, mm -hmm. and I did not do that for Dead Space 2, and I, I kind of wanted to, but like, <laughs> I remembered it was harder, and it was really difficult to juggle enough of the right kind of ammo and keep going. I put too much effort into upgrading, and I should have bought more ammo instead. I should have bought less upgrades, more ammo, that kind of thing, you know? Less upgrades, more ammo. But I, you know, I wanted upgrades instead, and that's like, all that was wiped away in Dead Space 3, you get a little robot that collects resources for you. So you don't even need to pay to win. You can just wait and win. It's like, dumb. you get enough resources from your little robot. Or if you pre-ordered the game like a, like an idiot, like I did, you get a lot of resources baked into your pre-order copy. <laughs> well, you know, taking away <laughs> the part of the core gameplay loop. Yeah. Like God intended. Exactly. Same as when I pre-ordered Dark Souls, so now I have a bunch of weapons that I get to start with that are like, they're fine. <laughs> they're, they're fine. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah, but Dead Space 3 does that, and it does a lot of co-op content, so there's another character that's around in a bunch of cutscenes, and then he vanishes constantly, and then you'll find a door on your, um, on your adventures that has an orange lock instead of the usual red lock. And it says co-op required on it. And it takes you right out of the game Garbage. because everything else about the game, it's so good. You have all these like fun moments where the HUD is just you. You see your health readout on the back of your suit. You see your ammo readout on your actual physical gun. That's pretty good. Like, I like there that. is no interface. When you open up your in-game menu, you hold up your hand and it projects the menu in front of you and you select items. You know, like mm -hmm. everything is real in world. You don't pause when you activate your inventory. You can pause. You can hit the escape button, you know, but you can't pause <laughs> like by looking through your stuff. You're still live. You're still like you can even move while you're looking through your stuff, you know? Yeah. And to have a game that focuses on immersion that much immediately in the third entry bungle it so bad yeah was so disappointing i would imagine and i gotta be honest if they remake dead space 2 i don't want them to remake dead space 3 i just want them to make a new dead space <laughs> you know <laughs> amazing but I'll, I'll take a dead space 3 remake i just won't be but like the it. story was weak well that's the, the story was weak the gameplay was weak it wasn't good compared to the other one mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i don't know Listen, I think it's important to acknowledge that some games just aren't good or aren't. That's what good. I'm. I'm so brave and I'm willing to do it. Um, sure. Yeah. 